I'm Julius Grafton and I'm here because I'm representing the old analogue live audio guy in a review of a very, very modern live mixing surface. Jimmy, what is it? This is the Avid S3L Compact Live Mixing System. It's made up of three main parts, Julius. We've got the E3 engine, which is where all the mixing actually happens. We've got the S3 surface, which is how you control it. And we've got the Stage 16 stage boxes. And, and you, you require to a touch, four of those. You require a touch screen, a third party touch screen. You require a screen. It doesn't necessarily have to be a touch screen. Okay. Um, and of course, the mix engine sits next to the console. Mix engine sits next to the console and connects to the Stage 16 boxes via AVB connection. And you can run multiple connect, uh, multiple runs of that so you can have a redundant connection. Each Stage 16 box has got two ports. And whether you run you know, dual Cat 5s from the engine to one box or whether you run to one box and then loop out to another as we've done here, that's fine. The system's very flexible in how you can configure it uh, and it's very, very good at auto discovering what's pl actually plugged into itself. Okay. No, note I said console, whereas it's a work surface, but it does have a few connectors on the back of it. Yeah, you've got, uh, you've got some analog I.O. on the back and uh, again, the surface also connects via AVB. Um, you've got headphone ports, you've got in, uh, a couple of audio inputs and outputs and so on. Uh, but yeah, as you say, it really is a surface. And it's a surface that's not like any other live mixing surface that I've looked at. No, well, for one thing, you can pick it up in one hand. Aside from that, it's kind of wanting to be two things to two people, in my view. Yeah, look, the, the whole basis of, of, of this system is it's, uh, it's designed to integrate to Pro Tools. And, and indeed, it does that very well. Uh, you plug in your Pro Tools machine via one Cat5 cable again over the AVB ports. And um, 64 channels of record straight into Pro Tools. And indeed, you can play back from Pro Tools into the engine. And you can flip either a single input or all your inputs over to Pro Tools as a source. Mm. How much training is involved from get-go? I mean, you, you assimilate very quickly, but your average sound guy who's working digital, how much transition time do they need from platform to platform? Um, look, if you've used Venue 3, which is what you'll find in uh, an SC48 or a D show, then you could navigate this conceivably entirely from the screen and not have a problem. Yeah, but that's, but that's, that's okay if you're in the DigiDesign Avid camp already. But suppose you've come over from Yamaha or Digico, uh, look, I think one thing, one thing um, DigiDesign slash Avid has always done well is that they, they've made software which is very intuitive. As far as the hardware side goes, I, look, I, I think I spent probably an hour, maybe two hours was enough for me to feel comfortable enough with it that but I'd, would you I'd do take a it show? out to a show. Yeah, sure. Yeah, after two hours? Yeah. Wow, well, that's, that's good with you. Yeah, I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to see, yeah, as with anything new that's running its first version of software, I'd like to leave it to sit and soak for 24 hours in the shop prior to taking it out. Oh, yeah, but that's, sure. But that's just my general paranoia about new software on new devices. Yeah, um, okay, so plugins. Um, supposing I'm an existing holder of plugins, I'm just going to USB my way in here and I lock away and off I go, right? Not quite. Why not? Okay, um, previous generation Avid consoles run a TDM engine. This uses mm -hmm. an HDX DSP yep. engine, which requires AAX plugins. So different versions of the same plugins, and not every manufacturer uh, is actually going to make plugins for AAX, like Waves. Right, I see. Gonna, there will be no Waves Which plugins means that all those this. guys will have their own policy about what you pay if you already own one and you need to get the new one. Yeah, look, and it's not, it's not really clear on whether or not they're going to charge you know, a purchase fee or just a, an admin or media charge, or they're just going to do it for but free. That, you'd have to imagine... It's fair and reasonable that they can do that. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to imagine that if they had their stuff together, it wouldn't be that hard to issue an AAX license for mm -hmm. the same plugin okay, via so, a web service. So, Mr. Brainy, um, we're doing the live gig and we want 24 tracks of record. How quickly can we implement that? Uh, it's pretty easy. You, you plug in your Pro Tools and, and it's basically ready to go. You, so can, we, you we, can assign from the patch bay what's So we have, a, we have a laptop loaded with Pro Tools 11. Yeah. And we just hook up and go. Pretty much. Nice. Yeah. And the other nice thing is that you can actually, via a USB port, there's USB ports all over the thing. And for the record, it, it, it is fundamentally a computer, but... Uh, one thing I do like is that Avid have had the decency to put it in a box that doesn't make it look like a computer. Like you look on the back, it's actually got XLR. Yeah, I like that. I like where that. a lot of devices we see now just have 
PS2 ports and stuff mm. like that. And it's like, and, and that's that's a bit insulting um, when you see that. So I like that they've done that. Uh, USB ports, you can plug in your USB key and something else that's new in Venue 4 is the media tab, which is uh, there. Um, that allows you to play back not only MP3, but also WAV files. And you can also uh, record in WAV. And right. you can choose what outputs you want to map to the recorder. Okay. So uh, how hard is it going to be to use this for stage monitors, Jimmy? Um, I don't think it's going to be too hard. I think the, the biggest challenge you face is, is, to be honest, the same challenge that you've got with an SC48 or a D-Show, which is uh, the flip to fader function. And, and it's it's been my biggest gripe with these consoles since forever, which is while you've got an auxiliary, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can choose auxiliary, you can flip that to a fader. The problem is that once you change your encoders to be functioning as gain, you've then got that gain functionality down on your faders, and that's that's, that's a, a terrible. Daft. Why do they do that? I don't know. They just do. It's, it's the worst function ever. According to you. According to me, but no, look. I'll back you up. On you that. can put gain, you can put high pass, you can yep. put compressor threshold and pan, and all of that stuff. You but can they flip could, to a they fader. They could fix that in firmware. They right? could fix that, and 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 the other nice thing about fixing that would be that you could then be having a send on there, and you could mm -hmm. have a gain or a high pass on your encoder. You could actually have two separate things, which at the moment you can't. Mm. You mm. just replicate what's here down to the faders. Mm. Yeah, I do like the aeroplane baggage ability of this. Yeah, look, i, I got to say, for, um, for what it is, for the amount of processing that's inside it, it's very compact. Yeah, and um, you, can, you can address this via tablet, can't you? Yeah, it, it's got, on the back of the engine, there's an ECX port, and you plug mm. that into your network and your wi wireless router, give the machine an IP, and then any VNC capable device mm. can be used to control. So you're not, that's actually a good point. You can use a, a laptop or a tablet or an iPad and you don't actually need to buy software to do that. The other thing is that they're, they're talking about doing other things like being able to customize user layers for faders and things like that. And I think some of that sort of stuff's going to lend to the operability yeah. of the console in general. Yeah. Um, but I th yeah, I think look, it's, there's look, more I think new it's, features on the way. I think, I think it's for avid users, isn't it? It's not for, I don't think it's for new. I think it's for, for new guys unless they really want to get in and learn Pro Tools or unless they've already got Pro Tools 11. Yeah, look, I think I think it's it's probably not your your ideal drop in replacement where you'd use you know another say 48 into 24 or 16 bus console. Mm. Um, but where you've got a situation that you need to do recording a live gig on a fairly regular basis. Uh, and you don't want to go for the expense of having splits and an extra yeah. set of recording guff yeah, of course. and an extra person to operate it all, this is, this is really got to have some traction yeah, in that particular sure. market. And yeah. With the amount of web content that's coming up now, because um, people are acquiring stuff in much higher resolution, mm. then we're actually able to push it out through the internet. So I think you know, for archival recordings and yeah. stuff like that, I think there's definitely a lot of merit to this, but I do think it takes a little time to wrap your head yeah. around. Well, it's been nice visiting Gearbox and hearing you talk about this, and you've got such a good grasp on these things. You assimilate them so quickly. I watch from outside the studio as you do it, and thanks for that. No worries. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.